Welcome to the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast with our mom, Misty Bailey. Tips and encouragement for real life homeschooling is headed your way. way. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new year. Can you believe it is 2020? That is craziness to me. As this episode airs, um, it is 2020, which, like I said, is just absolute craziness to me. I'm recording this middle of December, and it's hard to believe that a new year is right around the corner. This is episode 85 of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast. And I am Misty Bailey, blogger at Joy in the Journey and podcaster here at Joyfully Homeschooling. Um, I hope you guys have all had a fantastic New Year celebration and a great Christmas. Um, we take a little break from the podcast for a couple of weeks and are back now for a new year and weekly episodes again. So today's episode is going to be about anger and patience and homeschooling. And I want to warn you all in advance that this is a vulnerable episode for me. I'm going to be real and honest and hopefully by doing that, I can encourage you all and let you all know that you are not alone. Because while I was on this unglued journey, um, I felt very alone and judged and it was hard. And I still have moments where I feel like that moments where I can't be me and moments where I do maybe come off the handle and then feel like I'm just stuck picking up pieces and like nobody is going to look at me and accept me again. And it's hard. It's very hard. So I'm warning you all now that if you are one of those people who like to email the bloggers or podcasters that you disagree with or that you think are doing things wrong to just um, skip this episode because I don't really need the judgment. And um, like I said, I'm being vulnerable in this space and in the space that I own that I feel is a ministry and in this space that I feel God gave me. So Um, If that's you, you might want to just skip this episode. So to start off, I'm going to talk a lot about the book Unglued by Lisa Turkhurst. This book absolutely saved my life, my homeschool, my motherhood. And if you are a mom who struggles with anger, I highly recommend it. Like seriously, go get it now. Um, I will leave a link in the show notes. Also, this is not the kind of book that I would get from the library um, or even on audio, honestly, unless you also buy the paper version of it. Because the first few years after I read it, I would read it every new year or every time I felt myself having a very strong relapse in the anger um, department. So I highly recommend actually owning the book. Um... And I will also say that for me, anger is something that has been passed down. Um, It's a um, hereditary genetic thing. Um, I remember there's times whenever I have flew off the handle that I remember my mom doing the exact same thing. And I know from a fact after talking to my mom that my grandma... (laughs) did the same thing before her and my grandma before her. It's something my sister um, struggles with as well. And as I read this book and went through this journey myself, it brought back a lot of hard memories and kind of forced me to kind of deal with some of the issues from my childhood. And it took time to be able to talk to my mom and even my sister about um, some of those issues. So I wanted to mention that as well. Like maybe you feel that anger is not something that you struggle with, but maybe it's something that you 
fight from time to time because it is genetic. Um, maybe you had a parent or you have an aunt or a sibling or a friend who struggles with anger. Um, I feel this episode is good for anybody who has somebody in their life who struggles with it. I think we all have um, problems or issues that we have to overcome. And for me, one of those issues um, is anger. And um, yeah, I wanted to mention that. So I shared a small glimpse into one of my more recent moments um, with anger on my Instagram a few years ago. It's been about 18 months ago. And I'm going to leave a link to it in the show notes. But I want to start off with sharing this to give you guys an idea of what kind of an unglued mama I was and what kind of an unglued mama I still struggle with being. So I'm going to talk later in the episode about triggers and how to identify yours. But for this story, I'm going to say that one of my triggers up front is public places and waiting in line. So as a family, we were going to Kings Island. And for those of you who don't know, this is a huge amusement park. And it was the first time that we were all going to go together alone as a family not with a church group or other friends, and we were all so excited. We were going to spend the day together taking turns, riding rides that Daniel could ride, and bigger rides. And at this time, we knew he was ready for some bigger rides as well, and we just wanted to spend a fun day at Kings Island together as a family. But I knew there would be lines and waiting and people. So I wore my Joy in the Journey t-shirt Because I know that crowds and amusement parks, my ADHD sensory kiddo, and my impatience would not mesh well together. And I was hoping that the shirt would keep me calm and unglued because I wanted to walk the walk, right? I wanted to be, you know, joyful as I went about the day. So first half the day went great. Then about halfway through the day, we decided to get some of Kings Island's blue ice cream. It was dollar days, so the line was super long. Roger, Kristen, and Daniel went to ride a kitty ride and play at Snoopy, leaving me and Allison to get the ice cream. They were going to meet us back at the ice cream place, and in my mind, they should be back about the same time I was out of this line. So about halfway through the ice cream line, I sent Allison to get Daniel's slushy because he can't have ice cream, he's allergic to milk, and told her to come right back. Well, the line kept moving, and I ended up at the register ordering four ice cream cones on a 90 degree day with no one around to help me. I looked around, there was no Allison, no family. I checked our family app on my phone to tell to, that would tell me where my family was and they looked like they were nearby. So I started walking towards their location, but I never found them. I called my husband, no answer. I called Allison, no answer. At this point in time, I had ice cream running down my fingers, melting, sticky ice cream, and I was starting to fume. I tried to call a third time, and as I did, one of the blue ice cream cones fell on my shoes. I was down to two cones at this time instead of four because one of them was melted all down my fingertips. I circled back around to where we were supposed to meet, and as I did, I noticed my family all together, coming from the opposite direction. The direction that was the long way around from the ride they rode. My husband's eyes connected with mine and I knew that he knew I was angry. He started to apologize and say he was looking for me when I waylaid him with blue ice cream. No, I'm not joking. I threw blue ice cream on my husband in the middle of Kings Island on one of the largest days of the year in front of my kids. Not my proudest moment. But moments like these used to happen all the time. I mean, all the time. And not just with my husband. They happen with my kids. And while they don't happen as much now, it is still a struggle for me to stay unglued. The moment at Kings Island reminded me of that. And this is why I laugh when people say they can't homeschool because they have zero patience. And my husband laughs too because... The truth of the matter is that, as this ice cream story shows, my patience is thin, very thin. I'm not sure if it is my type A personality or just that I overall stink, but patience is not a virtue that I carry. However, homeschooling has required patience on my part, 
and lots of it. And I'm thankful that I have homeschooled anyway, because this is one area where God is still working out the kinks in me. My unglued moments over the past few years have become less frequent, and I can see how God has molded me and helped me. And without homeschooling, I don't think I would have ever taken the time to allow him to work with me in the patients department. And I know I'm not alone in this area, which is why I wanted to share with you all some of my story, some triggers that I have to watch for and that you may struggle with as well, and how to avoid those triggers, overcome them, and be a more patient and joyful homeschool. So let's start off with the triggers. How many of you have had a story like this? No, not the story of throwing ice cream at your husband, but going to bed the night before, feeling kind of like poo, waking up and feeling even worse, but moms don't get sick days. I think that should change, and I think everybody should agree with me. I had to get up and work and get our day going, and as the day went on, I felt myself getting more and more grumpy and more and more sick. I continued with school, chores, etc., just like any other day, but I knew I was going to blow. I could feel it coming on, and sure enough, after lunch, it happened. Mommy blew up, and afterward, I felt awful. I'd been doing so well. I'd been on my unglued journey for probably two years at this time. This was, this was mid-2014, and I felt like a failure. And if you take a good look at situations that happen in your lives, like the one I just talked about, you should be able to recognize the triggers that led up to that moment and see where your weakness for being unglued begins to play in. And for me in that particular moment, there are a few things that had been going on that then in turn led up to me becoming unglued. And the first was skipping prayer and devotion. So when you have an unglued moment, I want you to ask yourself first, how is your prayer life, your Bible reading? When I begin to not feel like doing my devotions and instead choose for 10 extra minutes on Facebook, that's a big mistake. I always feel a difference in my life when I opt out of my morning devotions. That time with the Lord makes me ready for my day. Even if it's just five minutes of reading a devotion in my email, it helps. And believe me when I stress that you should never opt out of this time. Also, the minute I felt myself tensing up on that particular bad day or the minute you feel yourself tensing up and you feel an unglued moment coming on, excuse yourself to your prayer closet. That for me would have kept me in check of my emotions and would have kept me from coming unglued. So now whenever I feel those moments coming up, I know I can excuse myself, take a moment and pray. And it's really important to be aware of the way that you're feeling and knowing how you are doing in that moment and controlling your emotions. The next for me is doing too much. On that particular day, I was sick. So why did I insist on school chores and everything else on my daily to-do list? Because I am crazy. Moms, when you're sick or have a to-do list a mile long, you're bound to blow up on someone. Chances are it's going to be your kids because they're the ones with us all day, every day. They see us in our good moments, our bad moments, and our ugly moments. Save them and yourself by saying no to overcommitments, long to-do lists, and just doing too much. It is totally okay to say no sometimes, and when you are sick, It is okay to have a pajama and movie day. No one will judge you for that, I promise. And if they do, they're probably not the kind of people you should have in your life to begin with. The next one is exhaustion. Sleep is something our bodies need, and without it, we are walking on eggshells. I was so tired that day, and in hindsight, I should have slept longer or told myself I could nap when the little ones did. As moms, we need to make sure we are well-rested and tell ourselves it is okay to take a nap when we are sick or hit the snooze button if we had a late or particularly rough night. Here are a few other things that I've learned specifically just from the Unclued book. And one that I think was the hardest for me when I read this book is recognizing the four different types of unglued reactions that Lisa talks about in her book. And I have all of them. 
as I was reading the four different reactions, I could pinpoint which ones my mom had, which ones my sister had and my grandma had, and which ones that I see in one of my three kids. And realizing that I had all of them was a very hard and overwhelming realization because I knew I had a lot of work to overcome. And I'm not going to label what those reactions are here because I really, really think you should buy the book. And this episode is not a paid promotion at all for this book. Um, I just have had many moms message me through the years um, or leave on comments or feedback forms that they struggle with anger. And I feel that it's a quiet problem in the homeschool community that moms don't feel comfortable talking about. And we need to stop that. We need to talk about this and talk about how we can overcome it. And that's where this episode's coming from. So, but out of the four different reactions, I tend to react in all four ways. I just spew them out in different ways on different people. My family tends to get the ugly, exploding side of me, the angry, yelling mom, while others tend to get the stuffed up side of me where I just hold things in and I don't necessarily spew them out, but I end up putting up walls and blocking people out of my life. And that is just one big realization I had from the book. Um, The next is recognizing that I have too often have unrealistic expectations of people. And I think this is something that many of us struggle with. And it's a huge, huge problem for me when it comes to becoming unglued. I have high expectations of people and situations. I can leave for a day with my family and expect the day to go perfect, like I did with the Kings Island trip, with perfect memories, perfect children, and no messes. But then you get on the highway, child one pulls child two's hair, child three pukes all over their nice, clean, perfect clothes, and it's enough to send any mom into an unglued frenzy because we have these high, unrealistic expectations. So what can we do as moms? We can change these expectations by realizing that children are going to make messes. They're gonna fight, and if we acknowledge that before we hit the road, it will help tame our raw emotions before they get out of control. A few other ways that you can have unrealistic expectations. If you know that typically you're gonna wait about an hour at the doctor's office, Don't go in expecting that this time you're going to be out of there in 30 minutes. You're setting yourself up for failure. If so-and-so is typically not a child person, don't expect that as soon as they see your adorable bundle of joy, that's going to change. You can't change a person's attitude. You can only change yours. So recognizing that your expectations are unrealistic ahead of time, like look at your day and tell yourself, Okay, this is what I expect my day to be. And then ask yourself if these expectations are realistic. And if they're not, change a couple of them. You know, give yourself an extra few minutes at the doctor's office. Don't overschedule your day. And don't expect to have a perfect day full of amazing memories and not have your kids argue. Because if you go into it knowing that something's going to happen, because that's just life then you're going to be able to save yourself and your family a lot of heartache. And if you do happen to end the day with the perfect day, then that's just a bonus. The next one is to tame negative inside chatter. And this is a big one. Um, When I sit and insult myself in my head, I automatically assume other people feel the same way about me. How often at times as a mom have you thought these things? No one likes you. Why did you say that? Everyone is going to think you are stupid. You just yelled at your kids again. I thought you were trying to change. Look at the way your kids are acting. Everyone thinks you are such a bad mom. See those moms talking over there in the corner? They're probably talking about you and how annoying you are. When you assume people are saying or thinking these things about you, it builds up a barrier inside. You're assuming the worst about yourself and other people. A few ways to help with this inside chatter is to ask yourself, did someone really say this or am I making assumptions? Am I immersing myself in the truth? And are there situations or relationships that are feeding my insecurities? That's so, so, so important. Put people in your life 
that builds you up and not tear you down. A building point for these questions is Philippians 4, 6-8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Speak words of truth to yourself. When you hear negative thoughts, replace them with words of truth. I am a great friend. I am trying to be a better mom and am making imperfect progress. I spoke what God laid on my heart. God loves me for who I am. Also, be real with your friends. Moms too many times don't share their thoughts and their struggles with other moms because of this negative inside chatter. And we need to encourage each other by being real. Let others see our mistakes so they know it is okay to make them too. And when a mom shares these struggles, be real back. Don't judge her when she is coming to you with a problem or struggle. I encourage you also to find an accountability partner, one who you know will help you and not judge you and who will encourage you, not criticize you. Mine has been a huge help as I went through this journey. Also, realize that some friendships and relationships are feeding our insecurities. There is such a thing as toxic relationships. God created us all differently, and sometimes two people just don't mesh well together. But we can still love the person, but we don't have to hang out or be best friends with them. We need to surround ourselves with relationships and thoughts that are pure, honest, and lovely. Sometimes some people bring out the worst in us, and if this is the case, it is better sometimes to let that relationship go. Podcast sponsors make the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast possible. So let's take a moment and thank our current sponsor, Masterpiece Society. Don't just expose your kids to art. Let them experience it. Charlotte Mason wrote, The art training of children should proceed on two lines. The child should begin both to express himself creatively and learn to appreciate art. Masterpiece Society is here to help you with both art expression and art appreciation by utilizing our rich multimedia art lessons and our open and go art appreciation curriculum you will create meaningful art experiences with your kids and teens we have completed a few lessons from the Masterpiece Society over the last few weeks and have really enjoyed what we have completed so far they make bringing art beauty and creativity into our home a painless process which is perfect for this busy homeschool mom who cringes at the thought of arts and crafts don't believe me try it out yourself for free go to finding joy in the journey dot net slash masterpiece society to get your free lesson delivered straight to your inbox that is finding joy in the journey dot net slash Masterpiece Society to get your free lesson delivered straight to your inbox. Now, let's get on with the podcast. The next step in overcoming our unglued moments is to recognize your weaknesses. One of my many things that I've had to come to terms with is that I tend to become unglued when I feel wronged, and when I feel that I am not in control of the situation. Control is a big one for me, and it's something that I really, really struggle with. And, but God, God did not give us feelings so we can spew them out at people. This is a quote from the book that I want to share with you. There is nothing wrong with having feelings. Feelings are good. God made us to be emotional creatures who experience the highs and lows of life through our feelings. But while feelings are great indicators of what we are experiencing, they should not dictate how we react to our circumstances. Feelings should be indicators, not dictators. And that is something that I have really had to 
work on, particularly if I am not in control of a situation or I feel like I'm losing control of a situation, it's important to step back and realize that the feelings that I'm feeling, you know, those feelings that you you know you're going to blow up, you feel them coming on. That's not an indicator necessarily of what I should do just because I feel like I could blow up, just because I feel like I'm out of control. That doesn't dictate my reaction. It's just an indication of how I'm feeling at that moment. So that's when it's important to step back, take some time, go to your prayer closet, walk away from the situation for a minute and talk to yourself and then reapproach the situation. And that is very, very, very important. And it's a weakness that I hope I'm not alone with, um, but it's a weakness that I've had to recognize in myself. I've also talked to a few people that's really close to me and in my inner circle and explained to them, like, this is something I struggle with. So if you see this, if you see this in me, if you recognize this in me, please hold me accountable. And I've had friends do that. I've had friends be like, look, I, I you might want to excuse yourself for a minute because they see that coming coming out in me. Um, My kids, they know (laughs) that one of my weaknesses is sitting on hold with the phone. Um, You know what I mean? Like when you call businesses or different things, you can never get a person anymore. It's always a computer. And that's a weakness of mine. I cannot stand sitting on hold and not, you know, not being (laughs) in control of the situation. Um, So they know that about me. And so if they see me on hold, you know, I have found that I'll put it on speakerphone and kind of go throughout my day um, or I'll wait until a different moment um, in the day to call, maybe when I have more time or I'll turn on music in the background um, that'll keep me upbeat and not have me think about the fact that I have to sit on hold for 40 minutes to talk to a customer service representative or something like that. So recognize your weaknesses and even share them with people that you know and that you know will love you and help you overcome those triggers that can cause unglued moments. So after all of this, um, the years I have spent trying to get it under control, the time I've spent in God's word and in resources like unglued, I would love to tell you that I am healed from the unglued reactions, but I am not. I will say though that the book Unglued broke me and made me realize that I choose to become unglued. I can blame other people. I can blame the customer service representatives or the fact that that they always put people on there that don't understand English, or I can blame the long lines at Kings Island, or I can blame my kids for not listening to me the first time. But in reality, I am the one who chooses to act a certain way. My unglued reactions have decreased a lot through the years. Um, you know, I maybe have a couple a year, if I'm if I'm honest, whereas they were happening very, very often, at least weekly, whenever I first started this journey. And I've realized that because of going through this unglued journey, because of trying to recognize my triggers and trying to overcome and trying to be a more joyful mom, um, that I have drawn so much closer to the Lord. Becoming broken, allowing this book to break me was not a bad thing. Um, Being broken is not a bad thing. It helps us realize changes we need to make. And it also helps us come to the one who can heal and help us. And that is God. While I still have unglued moments, I know that I'm growing, and Lisa in the book calls this imperfect progress. When we start letting God change us and give him control over our emotions, we can begin to see imperfect progress. Imperfect progress helps us move forward. Instead of circling around with the same old reactions, we can choose the good response over the easy response. When I have moments like what happened at Kings Island, and I blow up, I always tend to feel like a failure afterwards. I cry. I beat myself up. Why? Because that is not the mom I want to be. I want to act in a way that is pleasing to the Lord, my husband, and my children. 
So when those moments happen, and and they will happen, we're not perfect human beings. Um, God did not create us to be perfect. We cannot be perfect on this earth. We live in a broken world. So when those moments happen, we can apologize to those we love. Um, there's been many times I've asked my kids to pray with me after I've had a moment. And I let them see me ask the Lord for forgiveness. And I let them hear me ask for more patience and for more guidance. And in doing this, we're modeling brokenness to our kids. We're modeling to them how to ask for forgiveness and how to admit when we do something wrong. Moms, we will make mistakes. We all have weak moments. And mine may be becoming unglued. Yours may be something else totally. What is important is how we handle those mistakes. It is so important to ask our children for forgiveness, ask the Lord for forgiveness, and recognize what we did that can set off our bad behavior, what those triggers are. Because I don't want crazy mommy days. I don't want my children to remember mommy blowing up in anger. I want them to remember a joyful mommy who can control her emotions. And when we make the mistakes, we can sit and dwell on the days where we mess up, or we can choose to find a way to take those moments and learn from them, those moments of imperfect progress, a time to remember how far I've come and that I still have work to do. I have links for a few related blog posts in the show notes, one for the mom who struggles with patience, one with a list of scriptures and prayers for homeschooling moms, and a few others I think are relevant to this topic. Be sure to check those out. I'm also going to leave a link to my Join the Journey t-shirt, just in case you want to try and hold yourself accountable for those days when you know your unglued tendencies are going to be tried. I'm also leaving a link to the unglued book and devotional. Please grab this book if you struggle with anger. I promise you it will help you have a more joyful homeschool. And the last thing I want to leave with you is this quote from Lisa Turkhurst. Imperfect changes are slow steps of progress wrapped in grace. Imperfect progress. That's it for this episode of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this today. Have a blessed and wonderful day. This has been an episode of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast. I thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please take the time to leave a rating or review on iTunes or whatever platform it is that you use to listen to this podcast. That tells the powers to be I'm not talking to myself. Also, hit subscribe. Then you will catch every episode of the Joyfully Homeschooling Podcast each week right there in your podcast feed. You can find show notes and more at joyfullyhomeschooling.com and clicking on the episode number of the episode you are looking for. Thanks, guys. I hope this podcast encouraged you to head out there and have a more joyful homeschool.